இனி அடுத்த அமர்வு நம்மை சூழ்ந்திருக்கும் விஷயமாகிவிட்ட ஒன்று தொழில்நுட்பம் தொழில்நுட்பம் தான் நமது எதிர்காலம் அது இன்றியமையாத ஒன்றாக ஆகிவிட்டது பல புதிய தொழில்நுட்ப போக்குகள் தினமும் மாறி வருகின்றன தினமும் புதிய தொழில்நுட்பங்கள் உருவாகி வருகின்றன இத்தகைய சூழ்நிலையில் தொழில்நுட்ப போக்குகளை நாம் எப்படி நம்முடைய தொழில்களுக்கு சாதகமாக பயன்படுத்திக் கொள்ளலாம் இது பற்றி நம்மோடு பகிர்ந்து கொள்ள வருகிறார் ஏடிஎன்டியில் ஏடிஎன்டியில் குளோபல் இன்ஃபர்மேஷன் செக்யூரிட்டியின் துணைத் தலைவர் திரு கார்த்திக் ஸ்வர்ணம் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் குட் ஆஃப்டர்நூன் Thank you. So this is my first IBCN. So we should give a round of applause to the organizers of the IBCN. It's a fantastic event and uh, really thank you. So so you know as uh, as the my my MC you know rec- introduced me I work for AT&T. I'm based in Chicago. So AT&T a little bit about AT&T, right? AT&T is uh, was uh, founded by Alexander Graham Bell who invented the telephone company about 140 years ago. Right? We're a $300 billion company. We have 300,000 employees all across the globe, and uh, we're primarily a telephone company. But with that, what do we do today? We don't use the phone to make phone calls anymore. We use the phone for everything else, right? It's a camera, it's an alarm clock, it's your flashlight, it's your watch, it's your map, it's everything but phone call, right? Hold the thought for a second and I'll get to it in my few slides coming across, right? With that said, let's get started. So tech is rapidly so I'm going to stand here with the mic okay so tech is rapidly reshaping our world right a lot of things are happening around us and how we live work and play is dependent on technology today so i think if you go to the next generation you know if you, i mean i think there's baby boomers in here generation x millennials generation z you know we give these name for various generations right and when you talk about some of these generations some of those things that they would buy and use are dependent on whether that is technology enabled or not so i think we have to start to embrace technology and that's kind of what my focus of the conversation is going to be okay so do you all recognize some of these uh, logos in the in the slide so what have they actually done i mean we all know uber is not a taxi company and if we all thought that taxi companies cannot be displaced or supplemented Uber actually suggested it did it right there has been a study that's been done that people are stopping to buy cars at least in the US where they can use Uber for it right Netflix they're not a content company they bought the content from somebody else but they created the experience you know i know yesterday mustafa was talking about product experience and story which is actually very critical right you need to have a decent product but the experience has to be out of the world and that's exactly what Netflix and these guys have done right i said uh, we were a, we were a phone company 140 years we pride ourselves that we invented the phone but if we were holding on to our laurels we would be disappearing right as at&t would be disappearing right so because whatsapp everybody uses whatsapp nobody pays us pays for any more for international calling std isd all kind of stuff right that revenue stream is actually depleting so what we have done in at&t is we have transformed the company as well right so you can't really say oh, hey that's what we have done for over 100 years but then in the last 10 years we have kind of migrated off and said we're going to be doing a lot of other things right so we're into the media business if anybody has watched harry potter uh, that's 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 part of warner brothers which is part of at&t if you watch cnn news that's part of at&t but everybody thinks it's a phone company but we do a lot more than that and that's exactly because the market demands it the customer needs it uh you know i know there was a gentleman that was talking about design thinking earlier the concept of design thinking is not what you sell to your customers you need to sell what the customer wants and you adopt your company to do that right so that's exactly what what we're doing right like next we are um we work with them to talk about how a blind can see right so take take a blind and uh, a blind person and a blind person can be communicated and he can see that right so t- how technology is actually transforming if you're in the medical business if you're in the tv business if you're in the taxi business or for that matter it can be any business right so this is your time right the beauty of it is you got the raw material you got the batter now it's a matter of making the idlis like the guy yesterday that mustafa said yesterday right so this is your time right so how do we do how do we start to bring technology into our business in a smaller scale that way it kind of helps our business to grow okay 
So I want to I want to take a couple of minutes, like segue into what's happening around us, right? So Internet of Things that we call it. So right now we have over 20 billion devices. Your smartwatches to a lot of other things that we have, right? So what are we talking about here, right? Everything is going to be connected. So, you know, all the way from a medical device that is sending your vital statistics to your doctor to the cow that is telling you when to come and milk the cow, right? So that explosion is going on. We look at it as a, almost like a close to a trillion dollar business. Right? So that's one phenomena that's happening and shaping up our lives currently, right? The other piece is, this is actually interesting, right? I think everybody uses mobile data. In 2016, people used about two gigabit of data in a month, right? That's just in the Asian region, right? By 2022, it's predicted to go up by five times, 10 gigabits. So the bottom line is, I think it comes back into use use of the mobile devices and mobile applications. So now we need to start to look at to say, how do we integrate this into our businesses? Right. So we have two options, right? I, I think there are, you know, it's a bigger audience here, and, and I think I'm sure a lot of different uh, diversity of businesses that are represented here, right? Some of them are in manufacturing, some of them are in trading, real estate, investments, technology, and a whole bunch of other things, right? So. Uh, two options. If you are a traditional business, the question is how do you embrace technology? And how do you bring, bring technology to partner with you, right? So the, the question is, you can say hey, Amazon is coming in and trying to do that same business. Do you partner with it or do you fight with it or do you integrate with it? Right? So I think technology can be embraced by a traditional industrial revolution technology companies, right? Or non-technology companies. The other option is you can now, we as Nagaratars can look at it and say this provides a white space opportunity for us to create solutions. Okay. There are various technology solutions. Technology is obviously an ocean. I'm not going to drain all of it. I'll touch on some of the key ones um, that are interesting to us, right? So this really provides a white space opportunity for us to create a brand new business out of it. So talking about opportunities. Opportunities are time and money, right? So when you look at it, I think data analytics uh, from a technology perspective is one of the critical areas that a lot of companies are looking at it, right? So when you think about data analytics, recently the elections in various countries have been managed by data analytics, the data that goes in there, the sentiments that goes in that, right? So a lot of people have a lot of data. You have a lot of data in your business. Now the question is, how do you monetize on the data, right? So to monetize on the data, you need to do a few things, and we'll look into it in the next, in, in the next few slides. The second opportunity is automation. I think automation frees us time and money for us to go ahead and invest in other opportunities. So that's another area where we see, from a technology perspective, how that can be brought in. The third is security. I mean, this is near and dear to me, right? I've, I started in security about 25 years ago. Um, I, I still remember people who tell me, you know, nobody needs security, just go away, right? It was like selling insurance. Nobody wants insurance because you're never going to see the value of it while you're alive, right? But that has changed in the last 25 years, right? You know, various uh, situations from a national state perspective, that has kind of changed. So there are a bunch of opportunities in the security business that we can take a look at it as well. So let's dive into data analytics. So comprehensive insight into customer activity is valuable. What I mean by that, I think when you're selling goods to your customers or you're manufacturing and providing that, a lot of times what we do is we end up looking at it with the microscope, right? Or we have blinders on and we're looking at what we're doing and how is that resonating with the customer. But you got to think beyond that. In fact, what you need to start thinking about is you need to think about the data from your customer, not for your own product, but your adjacent capabilities, right? If I'm a cell phone manufacturer, I'm selling a cell phone, I don't care if the user customer is buying my cell phone or not, I need to understand what the customer is doing with the cell phone, what else they are buying with the cell phone, right? Is it a cell phone case? Is it cell phone additional memory? Protection covers? Extra storage? What are they doing? So, I think those customer insights will generate more white space opportunities from a business perspective. Okay. So in order to do that, you need to collect not only the data, 
but to generate valuable insights out of the data. And it is going to be very difficult to do without adopting some of the technologies. Right. The tools are getting very smarter. It's easily adoptable. I mean, it used to be that you got to spend millions of dollars to implement a business intelligence solution or a data warehousing solution, and only larger companies did it, and it took years to do it, right? Right now, not really. You know, tomorrow morning, you can put up, you know, go up to a cloud service provider like Amazon, spend $100 a month, and the tools are available right there, and then they instruct you how to do it. All you need to do is upload the data that you have. The data that you may have could be in an Excel file, it could be in a table, it could be in a notebook, whatever it is, you kind of put it together. So the benefit is, till you put it up there, you will not realize what the value is, right? What it provides us, it helps us see the forest from the trees, right? If you're in the ground level, we're going to be lost in the trees, but if you start to fly up at 20,000 feet up, you can see the entire forest and understand the landscape, and that's the same analogy that comes back into customer insights, right? So if you can look at it and say, what's happening to my business, what's happening to my customer, then I think you can start to leverage these data analytics opportunities. I mean, outside of that, if you don't want to use it for your own business and you want to create white space opportunities, I mean, I personally know there are a couple of companies in, in, in India that, that all they are doing is investing money and collecting all the data that they can collect. I mean, wherever you're, I mean, I go to a store here, everybody wants to know my cell phone number. I mean, they're, they're tracking everything that I do. Not only everything I do, wherever I'm going, right? So, so they're spending the money to collect the data. A Couple of years from now, they can monetize the data by generating insights and just selling that insights to who they need it to be sold, right? So I think there's a lot of data analytics opportunities available. So there are a lot of buzzwords, and I don't want to get lost in that, right? Machine learning, artificial intelligence, expert systems. But, but the, the benefit that we have where the technology has matured, you can basically look at it and say, well, I don't need to understand the guts of the working machine. Rather, use the application of that machine itself. So that's kind of data analytics for us. Next, let's take a look at automation. So the automation is, uh, one, of the, one, of the, one of the principles that we're looking at is uh, what I would call it as closed loop automation, right? Now, when you collect the data, you probably look at it and say, hey, you know, this is what is happening. Okay, if it is happening, what do we humans do? Either we go fix it or replace it. So can we create the automation to take the actions, rather notifying or reporting it, right? So I think thinking about closed loop automation, a classic example is, I don't know how many of you guys subscribe to like Amazon, right? Subscribe and save. It's automatic, right? It's going to be in your doorstep. If a, if a product arrives at your doorstep, you're not going to reject it. You're going to take it and use it, right? Till you want it, you may not buy, you may debate buying it, right? So I think the idea here is, Again, you know, industrial control systems. I think you can do a lot of energy savings as well as optimize your environmental conditions by, you know, automating industrial control systems. I know a lot of the, lot of the industries that are represented here are uh, manufacturing and uh, middle and small size companies. Uh, you know, you can create industrial control systems that can be automated that actually creates efficiency in your production units. The next one is supply chain management. This is amazing, right? I mean, this is exactly what like Uber does, right? They don't have taxis, they, don't have, they have customers, they can link to a taxi service, but they, can, they don't have to hold inventory, right? Holding inventory is one of the pain points for anybody, right? It's a, it's a capital cost, that is a sunk capital cost associated with it, right? So if you can automate your supply chain, you can get it from the manufacturer and deliver it to the customer when it is needed, where it is needed and how it is needed, and then you kind of become, pull yourself out of this process that delays it, right? So supply chain management is a great place to look at it uh, from an automation perspective. And there are a lot of tools out there, right? They, they talk about playbook automation and closed loop automation. Um, and I'll tell you, companies that have started in the last year, uh, there was a company called Phantom that was bought by another company for $300 million. Another company called Demisto that got bought out for $400 million. And there are four other companies, they all got bought out by, by bigger companies, right? So people were talking about automation. You don't hear this thing, you hear about everything else uh, so far, but this is the next wave if you want to latch on to. Right? The, the benefit that, that a lot of the businesses start to look at and see is uh, it, it, it eliminates the friction, 
right? I know, I know friction, friction is not necessarily a good thing for the business, uh, and it kind of speed to, speed, speeds the time to market, which is very, very essential. You know, you want to produce, you want to get it to the customer, and you want to make the money right then and there and move on, right? So I think time to market is an essential thing. When we are in a world where, which kind of embraces agility, which is basically, I want to do what you want, and I want to do it quickly, that's going to be very valuable, right? I mean, I know earlier, uh, um, uh, Ms. Hemalata Namble was talking about how in three months they could do prototype and that kind of pushed them out, right? So speed to market. And when you can automate your mundane tasks um, as part of technology, and the technology is available to doing it today, right? So that actually frees up your capacity to go and work on other strategic, high valuable things that can help you speed to market from your product perspective. The third phenomenon is security. I mean, let me get started on that thing, right? So first, first of all, as I said, 25 years ago, I would probably put this market at maybe a million dollar market across the globe, right? Right now, it's been projected to be a trillion dollar market, right? The annual budget for US government is, about, is between four to five trillion dollars. One fourth of that is gonna get spent. It's probably a lot, I mean, probably two or threefold of the Indian budget, right? So it's a trillion dollar business. And the problem with security business is it has grown up so fast, so quick, that it is not able to keep up with it, right? So, I mean, another interesting fact about security is in 2019, end of 2019, we have one million jobs that cannot be filled because we don't have skill, skilled individuals to do security jobs. So I actually, I'm part of a nonprofit organization where we push for security skills uh, for all the way from high school, right? Um, you know, trying to teach them what is more meaningful so that they can go into the workforce quickly. So the reason I kind of highlight that is, is for two reasons, right? One, corporations across the globe are struggling to recruit talent and build the capability and provide this service. And the beauty of this service is can be provided by some of us, right? Some of us here in this room, we can build a capability, build a service. The other benefit from a security perspective is, uh, let, me, let me get to the next little bit details. The cyber crime is a huge concern. You know, I know earlier, uh, Mr. Gurumurthy was referring to, somebody asked the question, you know, what is India known for? And he said intellectual property. And I'll tell you, Indian government has got a concern about intellectual property because we, ha we had some conversations with the government as well in India a few, few months ago, and the idea was their worry was that the Chinese are stealing the intellectual property from India, right? So even the Indians are buying the products from China and manufacturing it in China, so they're giving the designs and specs, and they're losing the intellectual property. So, so intellectual property is a very big concern of theft from a security perspective, right? <coughs> When you have a breach or a disruption, it's very damaging to the business. It actually, rip, it actually tarnishes the brand. There have been brands that have disappeared because they have had security breaches. It costs a lot of money to recover from a data breach, right? In a lot of data breaches like Equifax and Target, um, you can name it and they've lost it. Even Yahoo lost their database, right? So it's, it's a pretty damaging business for them. They have to sell it to Verizon at the end of the day. Right? So it's a very damaging situation. Hackers are increasingly sophisticated. Let me go back for a second. Uh, so why, how, how would we build a security business? Right? The way I look at it is security business is like having a fire engine. You don't expect like every building in a, in a city to have a fire engine because you don't expect every building to have the fire at the same time. Right? If every building were to build a fire engine, it's gonna cost a lot of money. So how do we build once and share it across, which is what I would call it as outsourcing or a services business, right? So if you build a security services business, you could help and you could be on a retainer basis, we would call them. That means you're actually gonna provide services to various companies and you take a money every year, even if you don't provide any services because you're gonna be there when they need you there, need you to be there, right? So then you can create the services business that you can then leverage it to sell it to the others, other companies, right? And I'll tell you, a lot of companies that are, as I said, there's a million jobs unfilled. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that we got to go and work 
and fulfill that million jobs, but turn that million jobs into a service that can be delivered from a common company, right? So there's a lot of opportunities and great investment opportunities as well, right? The other thing is that, and I know the, the, the earlier gentleman spoke about personal wealth and ring fencing, right? Personal stuff, I mean, we go in there, we think it's an ATM, we swipe our card, the card tells you, oh, we don't have any money left, right? And this is a real scam that went in the US a couple of years ago during Christmas, and you say, okay, everybody draw, withdrew the money, there's no money in it. They were actually skimming your card, and then the next thing you know is that they're using your information to steal money elsewhere, right? And then there's a lot of stuff going on right now, right? It's electronic transfers and so on and so forth, right? So it's from a security perspective, you need to take care of that, right? Also in the past, we have talked about uh, uh, wiretapping. Now everybody's like, you know, if you're putting your personal information or your business information or a potential client or a potential deal that goes on the email, somebody else is reading it. I mean, there's a, there's a saying, if you don't want to say it, don't put it in writing because it will be shared across, right? So I think there's an opportunity for security from the perspective on how do you protect the data and how do you make a business out of it as well, right? So. In closing, before I finish up, I want to say you can be a disruptor. You don't have to be disrupted. But I think it is time for us to move and start to embrace the technology and see how you can use it to benefit your business. With that, thank you for listening. I know it's like afternoon. So hopefully it made sense. Love to take any questions you have. So. What is, what is your advice for the startups who create technology solutions? I, I think I'll tell one thing, right? Make it fast. Fail. But one thing I'll tell you is fail, fail fast. Time is money. So I think whatever you want to do, you got to do it sooner and sooner than later, right? Have good mentors. I think as Emil Anamali said, having good mentors are always helpful. Um, and create a solution, talk to your customers, um, and then and find out what is the right technology solution that you want to create, right? And then if it's a failure, it's a failure, but fail fast, right? Fast is the key word. Speed is mark, time to market, right? So uh, make sure that you understand what you're trying to create, who, you, who, you're, who is your customer, what is the experience that you're trying to provide, right? The product is sort of secondary. The experience and the problem that you're solving is much more primary. So I would rather not walk up with a solution. I would rather ask what solution needs to be done. All right, thank you. I'm going to be around for the rest of the afternoon and happy to have a conversation. I enjoy the topic, so thank you. I think that was quite an enriching session about a growing industry. Thank you, Mr. Karthik Swarnam. Give him a round of applause.